Guys, welcome to another episode of Confessions of a Property Buyer. Today we have Nathan Prasad on with us. He's one of Brisbane's top property buyers. So if you're looking for a property in Brisbane, you might want to listen up. How are you today, Nathan? Hey, Nathan. I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, pretty pretty good. Pretty excited to to um to get some more videos up and um, share it with uh, share it with the world. That's exciting. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, can you share a little bit about your background and what makes you passionate in property? Uh, so I guess um, like leaving leaving high school, I was really motivated to to buy my first home. Um, I didn't really have any any you know understanding on how to work out value and everything like that, but I just knew I wanted to buy buy property. So you know, I saved up a deposit, and I was able to buy my first place when I was twenty one. Yeah. Um, Fast forward a year after owning it, I thought, hey, I'm going to, you know, remortgage it and, and use some of that as equity to buy the next property. That's when I found out that I've actually got the most expensive property in that suburb. So I didn't really oh, work out. <laughs> so I was like, damn, this, I'm not going to be able to build out this portfolio. But then I, I, I dived into, you know, just reading books on, on property and understanding how to flip property and, and also, you know, looking at how people develop property and, and make money from it. And, and that yep. further, you know, made me more excited about it. Um, but yep. sort of fast forward, I held it for another year and lucky the market grew and I was able to then sell it for another 40 grand. Um, I'd done a $5,000 renovation on it, but then I was able to sell yep. it for another 40 grand um yep. on top of that so then you know my initial deposit of i think it was around 15,000 on that time was grew and it, and i paid the debt down so then i had 60 grand and then i done the total opposite from there i went and brought the oldest crappiest house as close as possible to the cbd and um <laughs> yeah. yeah and um nice done, done done a renovation there and 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 from there you know i was able to then you know sell that one for you know 400 grand more than what i purchased it for so you know oh, that nice. initial 60 grand then you know changed into 400 but the way that, mm. but through that process you know i then started helping investors buy properties and 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 i've bought a few more properties myself but that's really really started i was just really like hey leaving school i want to go buy my first home and then i started to understand wow you can actually make you know you can actually use a bit like property as a vehicle to you know, triple or double that cash that you save from your job because it's, yeah, it's going to be really hard to save, you know, take you forever to try to save 400K. So, yeah, that's that's why, that's why I'm really passionate about property because, you know, it's such a such a good vehicle for people. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so how, did your first um, client as a property buyer, the buyer's agent, yeah. um, did it come organically or did you have to, did, 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 did it just like rock up on your plate? <laughs> did, they, um, did they just come to you? Did they see, or did you have to go searching for it? Uh, so when I first started off, um, I was wor already working as a building estimator. So I was working as a building oh, estimator. Oh, oh. I brought my first home and then I was um, really kind of getting bored of, you know, doing the nine to five. So I was going to the same office. It got up to yes, yes, six. And um, the role wasn't as exciting. So what I did was I started the buyer's agency as a bit of a side hustle to get started. Yeah. And then, you know, my first clients, they were developers because I was already in that that building space. So yeah. I was finding development sites in, in, in Holland Park and in Camp Hill and Malkovat. And I was finding them off market and then taking them to the developers. And that's where I yeah. learned so much more about, you know, how to negotiate. If you want to, if you really want to learn how to negotiate, you, you you go, you bring these deals to these developers, they will run you through, you know, what to look out for. And, and the biggest, the biggest thing, they'll teach you how to negotiate, especially these guys that have been you know, buying sites for the last five years. They definitely know all the little tricks of the trades to, to save, you know, hundreds of thousands on property purchases and also what to look out for when you go to buy property. So that was sort of my introduction into becoming a buyer's agent. Yeah. Nice. Well, that, that means that you, yeah, you, you would have been um, you know, I, for those people that are going out to be buyers agents, you would have been head and shoulders above them, uh, like with experience and that sort of thing. So you, you knew you could really tell them if a property was going to be like the, yep. the price, the price people were, oh, or yeah. 
and and like that then moved into the the next phase where I started helping investors. Um, and this yeah. is where you when you could buy, you know, a development site with a five percent yield. So this is going back in say two thousand and nineteen. You know, I was picking up um, houses on you know eight eight hundred square meter plus um, blocks out in like Arana Hills within twelve kilometers. We were picking them up. I was picking them up for say five hundred k, and they were renting for five hundred per week. Um, and then that was that was the next phase of my buyer's agency. I was buying, you know, buying holds with the development value add. Yeah, for clients. Yeah. Wow. So, so you're a property evaluator, is that right? Um, before Pro- I, I was a building a estimator. Evaluator. Building estimator. So is that like yep. a property valuer? sort of thing or an so, estimator for yeah so the the company was uh plantation homes so oh, you might nice, have heard of yeah. them yep so My essentially that one. yeah they got the big the big nice display homes i really enjoyed working there it just became very repetitive over time yeah, yeah. um but essentially you know you go into the display home then you pick the you pick the design that you like and then yeah. essentially i will get the your your plans the your, your yeah. land and then I yeah. would work out how much would it cost to put that house on that block of land. So yeah. it was, yeah, that's where I learned about, you know, looking at you know, the contours and, and retaining walls and, and soil reports. And that's the stuff that's probably like way too advanced for, you know, just finding a buy and hold is where I'm at at the moment. But it was, it just, it just gave me a really yeah. good understanding of, uh, but there is, yeah, but with, uh, with, um, um, new house on land, it, there is a big variance and, and there's a big unknown there. They don't know how long projects are going to take, oh. especially with, um, especially with, uh, you know, the cost of uh, building materials and that um, going all over the place. And, you know, so understanding that, you know, you look at something that's that an established building and it would be a little bit more, you'd be, <laughs> yeah, you know, de-risking be, the whole situation. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think so, the best, um, one of the best stories that really, you know, whenever you're going to buy a block of land yeah. or you're going to find somewhere that you want to develop, I would highly recommend getting a soil test done. So I remember yeah. when I was uh, estimated, this family brought a block of land. It was, you know, backed onto the water. So there's already a bit of an alarm bell scene, but they didn't do yeah. a soil report. So they went to go put their dream home on this block. And then when yeah. I went to go do, um, I got the soil report done. And then I went to go estimate how much it would cost to put a slab on it. They, they, yeah. I think it was around three meters down. There was actually a water table, so they had to then do screw pairs past that water table. So long story short, it ended up costing them an extra hundred and fifty thousand on just just on screw pairs, and then they had to put the slab. So then they went yeah. from, and then they got my quote, and it was yeah. two days after they went unconditional. So they were already uh, unconditional on this block. So then they ended up just going from this big high set to this low set. But, you know, getting a soil, soil test done that, you know, would have cost 2000 probably could have saved them a whole lot of heartache. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That's a, that's a crazy story. So that's a, that's a good segue to the next question mm-hmm. too. Like what's been like one of the most significant challenges you've faced in, uh, in your property journey? like as a, as a, as a buyer's agent. And, and I'm thinking in, in light of buyers that are watching this, um, watching this podcast, really looking for, you know, they, they want to know where to start, you know? Yeah. I, I could probably share, you know, the, the when I went to go you buy share all your secrets, <laughs> uh, I guess when I went to go buy my other, you know, two more properties really quickly, I didn't, I didn't account for the interest rates to go up. You know, so yeah, now yeah, when I'm talking to clients right. and they and they really want to go for this really growth style property, I'm trying to pull them back a bit, and we're trying to I'm trying to focus a bit more on cash flow. Yeah. So you know, if you're if you're starting out as as an investor, um, really look at the cash flow. You know, it it it, it can it can really like bleed you essentially if you if yeah. you don't if you don't run the numbers properly. Um, and, and also, you know, one big misconception that I've learned over the last three years is that, you know, you think, oh, I get all my capital growth being within 10 kilometers of the CBD, but with, with a lot of the deals that I've done and I've purchased two properties and, you know, at the same time, um, just for example, I, I purchased the property in, in Cannon Hill for 800K. This was uh, not last year, the year before. 
And then I purchased yeah. another property in Crestmead for 370K. Uh -huh. The one in Cannon Hill went up to 1 million and the one in, mm. in uh, Crestmead went up to 530. So they both went up 200K. But from like a percentage point of view, the one in, in, in Crestmead went up like almost doubled in price. Yeah. Wow. So there's, so, you know, you can get that growth if you go 30 Ks out and you do your research. Um, you don't need to go in a city all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, which areas are you focusing on now? Like if someone was to come to you and, um, are you, are you, are you Australia wide? <laughs> uh, not at the moment. I definitely, um, you know, with, with Brisbane, the way that it's going, yeah. you know, 5% yields are getting really, really tough to, to, to get now. Um, so yeah. I could see, you know, towards the end of the year, it's going to be near impossible. Um, I'm yeah. starting to build out, you know, teams across, you know, other smaller capital cities like Toowoomba, Bundaberg, Townsville and Perth, um, yeah. just so then I can help a lot of the clients that I've already purchased in Brisbane get their next property in, in an area that may not have as much capital growth, but it will give them that rental yield. And it should balance out their their property portfolio. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So do you do you help do you help people um, build that like strategize and build out their portfolios, not just buy one? Is that is that your? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, when somebody jumps on with me, I want to sit down and, and look at you know what's what sort of properties do they have at the moment? Yeah. And also, it's more so acting like a soundboard. Um, there's platforms online that that I can use and and we can we can really make it visual so we can say, Hey, maybe we'll buy, you know, you've got one capital growth style property. Now we'll plug in another capital growth style property, like you know, something in Brisbane. Um, and then I'd say maybe the third one, we might go out to a smaller, uh, you know, a smaller capital city, but there, there is a lot of prospects for growth yeah. and you know, cause it, it all depends on people's servicing. And then, and then after that, we can then, you know, maybe focus on an even smaller property deal. Um, but I, I do sit down with people and, and help them, you know, brainstorm the the portfolio that, that, that suits them and their lifestyle. Oh yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure it's really emotional and, um, everyone's got different expectations. So I find a lot of people from, um, Sydney and Melbourne are, are buying an investment property in Brisbane with the plan to move into it. So <laughs> it's, there's always that emotional aspect to it. I've found recently, I've always think it's quite funny. Uh, because I always, you know, sort of ask them, you know, um, I, is this, you know, something you want to move into? They say, no, no, it's just an investment. And then later on down the track, they said, yeah, we're actually planning on moving in the next two to three years. And it, it, at first I only heard it the first couple of times, but now I, I swear it's like every, you know, second person from Melbourne's relocating up here for the weather. Yeah. Wow. So you'd be, I'm guessing you'd, you'd be finding a lot of perfect kitchens and things yeah. like that. <laughs> you know yeah it seems to be a thing is that like so what would you tell a first time home buyer or investor about the process um of buying to gain advantage of other buyers and what might what might be yeah. some of uh the misconceptions that they have uh, i'd probably always say to a first home buyer just sit down with a mortgage broker and run through all your numbers yep so you can so you can understand what your repayments are going to be and, yep. and, and the second, the second part would be to jump on and, and do you do your research, you know, on the different suburbs and, 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 and we're like, we, we believe there's going to be some growth because once you've narrowed down on the suburb, the third thing is in, you know, that's when you engage a buyer's agent is really to, to finding an area that's, that's, that's a bit tricky, but it's not too hard. The, the hardest part of it yeah. is actually snagging a deal. So you can get real yeah. crystal clear on the suburb that you want to target. You can then grab all the real estate agents details, throw them onto yeah. like an email list, email blast them every week, because that first property you get, it's really important that you get a lot of growth from that because that property is going to be the, the, the leverage for you to get your next property. Cause it's, it's, it's super hard to save up another deposit. So you really yeah. want to be smart about it and you want to make sure that first property you get, you can just be like, cool, I'm going to move into this. You might just, you know, you might just sell it and then buy a bigger asset, but you want to sort of go into it with the idea of, Hey, how can we add value to this property? How can we extract as much value so we can leverage it and move into a bigger asset sooner? Yeah. I, I, I saw a stat the other day. It says the average Australian 
um, takes about 10 years to save up for their first home deposit now. So, yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. now, like, I went to Audi the other day and I got like one, and this is Audi. <laughs> they're like, oh, we're doing a small shop and then the, the, it ended up being $70 and the guy behind the counter even laughed as well. It's like the, the cost of living is just going to rise um, and, and you're seeing rents are, are, are driving, driving up. So over time, you know, it's, it's just going to be harder and harder to save that deposit. So if you've got an asset that's hedging against inflation, at least you're like for me when I was 21, it was like four savings. I was like, once I had that property, I, I paid it down, um, but that property grew in value. So then it was essentially helping me, you know, save and and a, in an easier way because it's you're forced you always pay your bills first i totally agree with you there so yeah get it so like that like the real estate agents like to tell us it's the best time to buy is today <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. just don't overpay best. like i like i could not stress that enough um i seen that when the market was like really you know hot um, people were, yes. you know, overpaying on properties. So once you find, mm. find it, just, you know, property is forgiving, but it can be a super ex expensive mistake if you overpay, you know, something could happen and you need to sell the place, uh, but you can't sell it for the amount you purchased it for. It's going to put you in a really, really bad position. So, you know, make sure once you find a property, you, 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 you check your comparables, you call up local agents, get their thoughts. A lot of the times they're, they're pretty. Um, they're pretty good and they'll give you an idea whether you're, you're overpaying or not. Yeah. Okay. When people come to you, what's some of the misconceptions that they, that, that property buyers might have? Like I, I hear a lot of people go to uh, like buyers agents to, to get off market properties, that sort of thing, you know? Um, so what do you, what do you see there? I think um, with investors, I, I tend to buy a lot of off-market deals because that's when we're able to yeah. get the value a lot lower. But yeah. the um, with families, um, I do say to them, "Hey, I'm going to you know find you as many properties which are on the market, but also off-market." But I, I always say to them, "There's a very very high chance the property that you really like will come up online, and you'll turn around and you'll say to me, can you just get this under contract for me?'" So you know, yeah. you know they you know there's this big misconception of oh, the buyer's agent's going to you know save you all this money but at the same time you know there was one that i got in in Wynnum last year um the family that relocated and you know i found them a really really good off market um yeah. and they turned around and they said oh the wife didn't like it because the, the yard wasn't big enough and it was yeah. absolutely crazy because it was so cheap but then the one that they she really liked was a much older house um but, you know, they were going to pay the same amount for it, um, but they just turned around and said, Nathan, do whatever you can to get this under contract. And we won it by exactly $1,000. So I went 1.33, 1,000. So if you're ever going in to put an offer, always try to add in, you know, an extra $1,000 or 500. And the agent literally sent us the, the two, our offer and the other offer. And he said, you yeah. won by exactly 1,000 bucks. So, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah and, that's so good. So that's, that's like, that's probably the biggest misconception is like when you engage a buyer's agent, it's just finding off markets, but it's more so when you find that dream property you want and there's, you know, 30, oh, 30 people at the open home and, you know, there's five of them putting in an offer. What, what are you going to do that's going to make you stand out from the other buyers? Yeah. Yeah. So that, 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 that raises a good, uh, interesting question. So do you, how do you feel like your, um, negotiation skills have gone over the last uh the last few years um you've been like a buyer's agent do you think do you think that's um uh, made it easier to uh deal with um sales agents yeah 100 percent. so yeah um you know when it comes to um, negotiating the first part is really understanding value around the property. So over yeah. time, you sort of craft your skill around how to work out a value for a property. You also look at where the value is at now, and you want to look at where the value may be in 30 days. And then you grab all that information to then decide, hey, how much should we pay for that property? So that's that's probably the biggest portion when you're going online and you're fighting against other agents. Um, and then you sort of, once you're talking to the agent, you just want to start stacking 
things against like I like calling it stacking. So you know you're building up the eight the relationship with the agent. Hopefully you've, you've worked with them before, so then they can give you some insight intel. Um, you know, second thing, if it's if it's an investment property, you want to then say, hey, like you give them the management. That's another thing you can stack on top of it. Um, yeah, wow. a, another aspect is you know outlining why you're such a good buyer. So yeah. attaching a story to your contract. Yeah. And then, you know, adding some sort of pressure. So you're just, so when you go to negotiate, you just keep stacking, stacking, stacking all these different, you know, components yep. all these, that then drives your, your, your contract ahead. So like, I just got one under contract and, and it was an off market property in Mount East and we weren't the highest offer. Mm. But I attached a story around, you know, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to play any games when it comes to the building and pests, which we didn't. Um, it's going to be the smooth sailing. Um, I already knew the agent. So, you know, that allowed us to get the property for $20,000 less because the seller needs, needs it to settle on that date. But, so the other buyers were just, you know, sort of fresh. So it can literally save you, you know, tens of thousands if you, if you, if you, yeah. if you implement the right strategy. That's awesome. That's, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's gold there, I reckon, because, you know, a contract is only as good as a person behind it. And if yeah. you, you're sort of bringing life to that contract, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that, that, so you, you, I guess you're sort of saying there that it comes down to relationships. Um, and the, the paper exists, like yeah. the contracts there, but the relationship will make that contract stand up, out and stand up. Yeah. That's so good. Relationships and persuasion. <laughs> you got to persuade them why you're, you're the better option. Um, and you sort of develop that over time because you lose some and it hurts. <laughs> yeah, you get, and you go yeah. back to the drawing board, you know, not like, you know, your, your normal buyer will do this maybe, you know, three, mm -hmm. four times over their life. But when you're negotiating on deals on a monthly basis, you're constantly going back and reiterating the way that you negotiated. Yeah. And you fine tune it. Yeah. Yeah. So pain's, pain's a great teacher. Yeah. <laughs> pain's, the be pain's the best teacher, you know? Uh, yeah. So I think, yeah, it's definitely not, not something they teach you at school, is it? <laughs> the best way to people for, what's the best way for people to find you? Um, and um, yeah, may, maybe, think, um... maybe see what you're all about. Yeah, if, if anyone wanted to go to the website, it's envisionproperty.com.au um, yeah. um, and, and they yeah. can jump on there and I, I post a lot of the property deals that I do on my Facebook page so they can just scroll through and they can see, you know, um, what sort of deals I'm doing. Otherwise, they can yeah, just... I've seen that. Yeah, I've seen, yeah, like you got... Yeah, if, I, I, I had a quick look at your website and some of the some of the deals and uh, on there are, are pretty... Um, pretty crazy like oh like, yeah they're just you, you wonder how do you do that yeah you know? so, yeah yeah, yeah check out envisionproperty.com.au that's that's <laughs> it's worth having a look at to see what what's really possible um you know with an experienced buyer you know to get yourself ahead of the market sure. and um you can also just google hopefully something good comes up but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. um, yeah. but yeah just jump um, either just reach out um, on social media or go to the website if you want to get in touch and, and uh, happy to jump on a call and, and, and run you through, you know, my thoughts on, on Brisbane at the time. And hopefully yeah. it gives you, you know, steers you in the right direction. Yeah, no worries. Well, thanks for popping on, uh, Nathan. It's, it's been really good, really good to see how you, how you think about property and how, how we can get ahead with you. So, uh, I hope to catch you in person sometime. Perfect. <laughs> thanks, Nathan. See you, mate.